Hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to turn this uh, six port router here into um, a five port switch. Uh, normally the, uh, the Cisco uh, small business routers like this one, uh, they already come pre-configured with the additional ports as a switch. So you can plug in your devices into any of these ports and they will see each other no problem. Um, routers like PFSense uh, need to be uh, configured to do that simple task, but it is possible. So I've labeled things here with this six port lanner uh, router and I'm going to uh, turn all these uh, additional ports, uh, port two, three, four, five, and six into a five port switch. Um, so I'm just gonna leave this here. Right now this is connected to um, internet, PC2 and PC1. Uh, the PC in front of us is PC1 and it's trying to ping to PC2. So nothing's happening right now because it's not a switch, nothing is routable. Um, but I'm going to turn it into a switch and as soon as I do that, uh, you're going to be able to see the, or the replies come back. Uh, I'm going to be using PC2 on another uh, computer here, and this is connected to PC1, the computer in front of us. So from this point on, I'm just going to leave this so you can have something to see, but I'm going to be configuring everything from this other computer beside me. So first I'm going to log into the, uh, the router here. And we're just gonna log in with the defaults. Admin PF sense for the password. And this is the um, the setup at the last left it at. Uh, so you can see we did a, a little configuration here with the um, enabling the crypto and uh, the thermal sensors. So you can see that. Uh, so what we need to do actually is uh, several things. We need to first enable all the other interfaces. So right now, these interfaces, starting from the third one, fourth, fifth, and sixth are not enabled. So we have to do this first. We go into interfaces, assign, and we start adding. So the next available interface here is the IGB2. We're gonna add that and save we're going to click on it we're going to rename it to LAN 2 and we're going to select enable and we're going to save that and we're going to apply changes and we're going to do exactly the same thing for the remaining interfaces assign add save click on the interface rename i'm going to call this one LAN 3 and select enable and select save and apply changes Now if we go back to the uh, assignment page, we see that there's no add button anymore. We've used all the interfaces up. So um, IGB0 is for the WAN, IGB1 for LAN, IGB2, LAN2, IGB3, LAN3, IGB4, LAN4, and IGB5, LAN5. So what we need to do next is go into the uh, bridges tab here. And we need to click add and we're gonna select all except when so we're gonna scroll all the way down and I'm gonna hold the shift key down and that allows me to select everything in here except the when interface I'm just gonna call this simply switch and I'm going to click save
All right, so what we need to do now is um, go into each interface and add some firewall rules. So what we need to do, click firewall, rules, and um, if we look at the, the main LAN interface, we can see that uh, by default, it adds, um, basically uh, allows access to any of the destinations. So what we're gonna do is going to uh, LAN2, and there's no rules there. We're gonna add a rule. Just to keep things simple, I'm gonna select uh, any here for the protocol, just to make sure that everything is allowed. And that's the only thing I'm gonna select and select save. And I'm gonna apply changes. Now, if we look on the uh, screen here of the uh, PC1 notebook, we can see that it's actually getting replies now. So just, just to prove that you know this is actually working, um, we can move the uh, PC1 uh, cable into another port and see what happens. So we're gonna, I'm gonna plug it into port four here. So it's, it's not a, yeah, here we go. Okay, so it's not fully plugged in. So it's timing out, can't reach it. I'm gonna plug it back in. And I'm going to go under LAN 3 and add the same rule again. And again, pick uh, any for the protocol. Click Save. And let's see what happens. So I just applied changes. And we can see that we're getting a reply again. So I'm going to repeat this for the remaining LAN interfaces. I'm going to add the same exact rule to each one of them. And last one here. Okay, so I've added all the uh, additional interfaces. So we should be able just to simply uh, move these cables around now and, and basically be able to still communicate. So even if we um, move these in various orders, we, we can still communicate. It, it acts like a, a switch, just like you would normally be able to do. So if you configure it this way, you, you can end up saving some money by not having to use additional hardware if your router has six ports like this one. So again, any, any order and uh, everything still works the same way. Well, I just moved the screen around, but there we go. So now I'm using the last two ports and everything is working exactly the same. Now I'm going to jump back to the uh, computer I was using to configure and open up a command prompt. And I'm going to ping that computer, which is 192.168.1.10. And I'm going to do continuous and I'm going to do IP4 display and there we go I, I can get a reply and now just to prove that this is working I'm gonna unplug PC1 just to see what happens so 
So now we're, we're getting both uh, ping windows are, are failing. All right, let's plug this back in and we're getting our replies again. So everything works just like a regular switch. And that's it for this.